Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Felix Jones and Lego Cheetah and welcome to my review of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I just got back from seeing the movie, going to do a non-spoiler section and a spoiler section. Non-spoiler section is going to be pretty brief actually. Uh, so where to begin on this old movie? Yet another film comes along that asks us to indulge in a reality where somebody like Eddie Redmayne exists talking out of the corner of his mouth all of the time and, we, and everybody just finds that normal. I actually, to be fair, I kind of do respect that Hollywood casts Eddie Redmayne in a lot of stuff these days because he isn't traditionally handsome, and um, and obviously just he's he's a very curious looking fellow. Who, um, I mean, it's the same thing I get where every time I watch a TV series with with uh, or some, or any piece of media with actors like um, Bern Gorman, in where it, you know like they behave in the most surreal, quite in a surreal way, and it looks very out of place up against like lots of pretty Hollywood people. Um, but it kind of, but you know, it really does work actually. And as, I, I have yet to see a Red, Eddie Redmayne film. I haven't seen Jupiter Ascending to be fair, but I've yet to see a Red, Eddie Redmayne film that I've actually not liked at all. Um, so yeah, Eddie Redmayne is actually pretty good in this. I thought he was going to be, I mean, he's pretty much the uh, tactless expert character that we see in absolutely everything, but not to the extent that he's annoying. He's not full Sherlock, uh, Sheldon, obviously autistic character who are making a figure of mockery because he's also respectable. I mean, he's uh, he he's just nice. He's pretty. He's just pretty cool. He um, he seems like a pretty all right fellow. I kind of appreciate him. He's he's pretty bland. I mean, to be fair, the character the, the character's slightly bland. Every, every almost all the characters are pretty relatively bland in this film. I there's no I would never I don't think I'm ever going to quote this film I don't th you know it's 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 rolling it's still it's still rolling's writing uh, translated to film and it's just not there's just not a huge amount of like defining character going on but I still enjoyed I still enjoyed the film overall I'd I'd say that I you've re if you've seen my recent review uh, where I did a top ten list of the worst stupidest moments in the Harry Potter movies you'll know that I'm not actually that massive of a fan of the Harry Potter films I used to love them when I was a kid when I was 12 I was running around with wands all the sodding time I knew all the trivia but that got replaced with Doctor Who later on um, I had toy wands I had the full Harry Potter chess set magazine I collected that for years despite the fact I don't actually play that much chess um, all sorts all sorts of crap uh, but yeah, I've, uh, you know, you stare at a picture long enough, you start to see the cracks, and that's what happened. And you know, it really just starts making sense whatsoever after just thinking about it for two seconds. And um, to be fair, that's not an issue that we kind of resolved in this movie. Uh, like, this is still non-spoiler section, obviously. But there, are, like, in every situation, from the very first action scene in this film. You, because I've seen the other films, I know that there are so many spells. Like I could think of a dozen spells in the first two seconds that could easily solve the situation because I know that magic should result in a world where there's just no conflict whatsoever. It's amazing that there ever is any conflict. So you always just think, I know there's a way around this because I've seen the other films. Um, so yeah, there is still that problem in this movie. Uh, but for the most part, like you just suspending your disbelief isn't actually that difficult. I mean, you just accept that magic exists in this world and um, the parameters of it kind of fall into place and you've ne it's like fast paced enough and um, the action is entertaining enough that you don't feel the need to question it all the way through even if like you are silently to yourself you don't and I did a couple of times down to the person next to me and but um, but for the most part you just you just go with it and, and it is entertaining um, all everybody hands in a pretty decent performance in this movie despite the characters being slightly bland um, one of my big problems are the Another thing that I really enjoyed in this movie was the soundtrack. I have not looked up who did it. I assumed it was going to be John Williams, um, but I don't think it was in the end. It, it, it was it was really good. It did. They threw in a couple of little bits of like the Hedwig sweep from um, from the original ser Harry Potter series, but for the most part, it was an entirely original soundtrack, and I really enjoyed it. It was it was pretty epic. It felt quite adult. Um, you know, it was it it was quite severe at times. Like it, it was never it was never as charming and whimsical as the Harry Potter uh, film series, uh, basic suite was. Um, I mean, it, it never was that light. Even in the scenes where they were sort of going in the direction of whimsy, as you know, the Harry Potter series often did. Not so much towards the end, but often did. Uh, it, you know, it's it was entertain. It was it was light and it was and really nice to look at. But it was it was still heavy. It was never quite that like 
very uh, light, uh, playful music. It was still, it still felt quite adult. The whole thing felt quite adult. It was so much better having the series revolve around a set of adults because we didn't have to cram in all that crappy dialogue that I complained so much about in my, um, in my review the other day, because we didn't need to make it sound like they were just, they were young people or, and then they didn't overstep the boundaries by making them sound like they were two year olds. Um, so that that was uh, generally a, good, a success. Um, another thing I appreciate about this film, there wasn't too many, like, gimmicks crammed in. There, there was no... It didn't seem like they were quite so fixated on the merch as I was expecting them to be. I was thinking they'd introduce loads of new uh, characters and loads of different types of magical thing because then they can sell toys and obviously they're going to be flogging Eddie Redmayne's wand and every other one that appears in this movie and action figures are inevitably going to happen but there wasn't there weren't that many characters who you were th there weren't that many characters in general um and there weren't that many characters who'd uh, expect to uh actually make action figures out of the subject matter for the f film uh apart I mean aside from the stuff about the magical creatures which you'd think would it would entirely revolve around. That stuff's usually sort of like the light comedic parts. Yeah, there, there were some silly parts to this film. There, I mean, it, it's a family film. There were some pretty dumb parts. There were parts that I was like, Eddie Redmayne, what are you doing? Did you read the script? But um, but then they sort of blend in, and by the end it all pulls itself together, and it's fine. Um, and just enjoyable. Like, that is my main thing about this film. It was a just a pretty enjoyable movie. Um, what, what, what was I talking about a moment ago? Oh, yeah, the subject matter is generally... It sort of delves into a bit of political and religious bashing at points, uh, which is, I mean, not bad. It's not that terrible. I mean, it, it, it's just like your typical strict uh, Catholic people and their incredibly self-righteousness. And I mean, they, I don't think it even necessarily, it mentions that they live in a church and they're clearly dressed as like, um, like religious fanatics, but, um, but I don't think they ever even say that they're religious outright. Uh, or even the word God at any point. Still, it's quite adult for something that they're showing to kids. Um, this movie was pretty predictable, uh, despite the fact that they were constantly finding loopholes for there to be conflict surrounding the magic. It was it was pretty damn predictable. Uh, apart from, I mean, the most part it was just like we know it was obvious who the villain was. It was obvious from the trailers who the villain was. Oh, I, I um, another thing I mentioned in my previous review is that I thought there were lots of really stupid moments in the trailers which actually wasn't nearly as much of a problem as I thought it was going to be. In fact, the stupidest moment from the trailer, which really pissed me off when I saw it, I was just like, this movie's going to be so dumb, because there was a scene in the trailer, uh, and this is the thing that I hate in modern movie trailers, you see it everywhere, it was in Pete's Dragon, it's in every, basically everything that involves a flying creature, and uh, it's basically that shot, for, it's a redo of that shot from um, Back to the Future Part 2, where Marty steps off of the side of a building, and um, it turns out that he's flying on top of the DeLorean. It's like, you know, somebody jumps off. Pan, that's another one. Uh, Pan jumps off it, off of this huge drop in the trailer, and you know he's going to be saved. Same happened in um, Pete's Dragon. The kid jumps off of a cliff and is saved by the dragon. It's really obvious. And then in the trailer for this movie, which was so outrageously stupid, was there was this scene where um, Eddie Redmayne... Well, it was a clip of Eddie Redmayne running towards the edge of a building, jumping off of it, and they're like leaping off the side of the building and then teleporting away. There was never any danger. There was no point in him jumping off the side of the building. If you're going to teleport, just fucking teleport. Why would you jump off the side of a building? Especially if you're not even going to let yourself drop. I mean, maybe if you... Like in Jumper, when they jump off the side of a building so that they can catch something, that's kind of cool, because they have to drop for a certain amount of time, so there's actual risk. There was no risk, there was no point, it was just ridiculous. Thank God that didn't get into the movie, so... Happy me. Um... But yeah, as I was saying, plot was all pretty damn obvious. We all know who the villain is immediately. We all know what's going to go down. And it all wraps itself up in a neat bow without actually um, giving away any spoilers. Uh, and it's, I mean, uh, yeah, it's. It, I don't want to, I suppose I don't really, I, uh, I should probably move on to the spoiler section. But I don't want to give away any spoilers. But yeah, it, I mean, like I say, it is predictable. There is one thing that you can really look forward to in the in this film that comes towards the end. And there was actually something, uh, there was an element to the story which I suppose isn't entirely original. It's been done. I, I After I saw it, I thought of places where it had been done before and better. Um, but there, there's this really nice bittersweet bit uh, that you should look forward to. Uh, it's really enjoyable. And just the whole scene is, is thoroughly 
enjoyable that surrounds the moment. But yeah, without giving anything away, I think that uh, all in all, the movie's pretty nice. Uh, it's nice to look at. It's decently colourful. Um, creatures rampaging around New York. Kind of seen it, you know, in in fucking everything now, I guess. But also like more directly like King Kong and uh, and also obviously like Jurassic Park Two. I don't think that's actually New York in hindsight, but you get the idea. Large animals rampaging around the city isn't actually that big of a deal at this point, but. It was still pretty entertaining, and I suppose there are some pretty nice scenes in this. There's this one scene that I kind of enjoyed uh, when I kind of realised, like, the implication. Something that they should really cash in on more in uh, in these Harry Potter movies. There's a scene where um, Eddie Redmayne is chasing this character. I don't bother trying to remember anybody's names as well, because they're so impossible to pronounce, or or they just... they Like, I, know, I don't think I ever properly heard what Eddie Redmayne's surname is. I know his first name is Newt. But his character's surname I never got because like they're always half mumbling it in thick in New York accents. Um, oh yeah, God, and there's the typical flapper stuff, and there's a character who's just like Tallulah from Daleks in Manhattan. Uh, sorry, that that doesn't really matter. That that uh, that just popped back into my head. But yeah, all in all, colourful movie. Uh, oh yeah, no, what was I talking about? Sorry, Eddie Redmayne's character jump is jumping is, breaks into the uh, jewellery shop and he just starts smashing the place up, and um, and it's kind of and you know it's fine because they can just like repair all of it immediately the second that it's done, uh, which is a really which is a, a kind of really cool concept which they don't cash in on enough just like the utter lack of repercussions that come from being a wizard. I would love to see more of that, just like a wizard just doing what the fuck he likes and then just whoosh, and it never and like nobody ever knows so it's fine. Just like, you know, Rick Sanchez as a wizard is what I want to see. Um, but yeah, as a general overview of the movie, colourful, enjoyable. Uh, it, I mean, not too colourful. It was uh, it, There were still lots of greys and blues because that's modern cinema, but not so much that it ever got boring to the eye or it was ever bothersome. Plot was fun. Uh, characters were fun. Nice bit of moments of comedy relief. Uh, I did laugh at points. A lot of it I thought was not so funny. Um... Oh god, CGI. Uh, it was because a lot of it was a lot of the funny moments. Funny moments were uh, with CGI animals, and um, you know, it's a lot. It was a bit. Oh, oh, it's so sweet. Cause it's so cute looking. I don't give a shit how cute it looks. It's not there. Uh, I I can't accept CGI. It just it, like it's not. That I can't accept it. And I really see that it has its place, and I can see that it can be done really well. But when it comes to creating characters, I think it's so boring, and it's so done, and it's so just like. Practical effects are so much better. I don't care if they don't look as good, they don't look as lifelike, they're fucking there. You know, my mind cannot... The human mind just does not accept that CGI is actually there. You just see straight through it, because you have to. It's like, I think it's almost like some primitive, uh, some primordial instinct of, um, of survival that, you know, you dip into the... Un you see something, you want to dip into the uncanny valley, work out whether or not it's a threat or not, and you see CGI and you know that it's not real and it's not there and you just can't, you can't be invested in it. I, I mean, I can watch The Princess Bride and there are these awful practical effects, but I still feel more invested in the action because they're fucking there. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, um, there was a decent amount, like going back to the Chris Columbus Harry Potters, which are the ones that I really enjoy, they, um, they used a pretty decent amount of practical effects and they swapped to CGI really immediately. There were, it seems like there wasn't even like a, a stall, even, not even... Uh, Voldemort himself could get away with ha without having CG constantly being done on his face to have his nose removed. Um, so yeah, I would not very not a big fan of the CG. There's a lot of CG shots. To be honest, the, the, there are so many shots in this C film that have got CG creatures in them that I really feel like they should have gotten a better budget for it, or like somebody or a better CG team. Like I don't know whoever does the Robert Zemeckis stop motion animation things. That the, the not stop motion, the Robert Zemeckis motion capture movies. Not for people, not for the human characters or any of the characters who are in any way humanoid, but just for the the detail of the animation that makes it look so lifelike. That's what we need to see. Or, you know, like Pixar quality type animation because these creatures need to look real or my mind just rejects them immediately. Uh, so yeah, this is my plea for more practical effects in modern cinema. I think it's one that a lot of people can get on with. I mean, it, it does, it really opens up the opportunities in the film, but uh, and also, practical effects don't need to be crappy looking. I mean, they we just uh, we've seen with movies like 
with any of Jim Henson's puppetry or I mean like one character that always springs to mind is uh, Audrey 2 from uh, from Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, he looks it's a cre like this giant plant which is obviously a puppet but at the same I mean uh, which not obviously a puppet it's a puppet but you would never it's so lifelike it moves with such animation and such uh, perfect. It just if we could see that translated into the modern cinema with just creatures being made out of puppets, it would be so much more entertaining for me and so much more um, compelling. You'd be it'd be so much easier to be invested. Um, that aside, like CGI and this isn't too. I mean, it's not too bad as CGI goes. It feels like they should have had a better budget or a better team working on it because there are a lot of shots that are almost exclusively CGI. Like you know, it's just a, a, an actor stood in front of a green screen. And it it's still it's just impossible not to be uh, not to be distracted by it at times. Like there's a bit where near the end Eddie Redmayne's interacting with this CG character and it like bumps against his head and his head moves. And I'm like I'm just, all I can think about is Eddie Redmayne stood going. So yeah, that that's a bit. Um, that could use work. I mean the guys who like the CGI intake in something like. Uh, Doctor Strange is really great. Why can't we get the people who did that sort of stuff, who can do that kind of detail and really make it look realistic? If you're going to have that much CG in a film, you really ought to put more effort into making it look real. Um, but then again, there's so much CG in this film. I imagine just the budget would have had to be spread over the over the course of the entire thing, and that it would that would be so much CG. Uh, like you you couldn't you couldn't afford to pay for any of it to be that particularly amazing. Um, but yeah, we'll leave that aside and we'll come back to CG another time. It's another rant for another day. Um, yeah, uh, so all in all, I would go see this film. I, as somebody who doesn't really like the other Harry Potter films, I had a good time watching this. I didn't, I don't think, like I said, I'm never going to quote it. I don't think I'm going to be in any huge rush to go back and watch it. I probably will go back and watch it again, at least once or twice, because I had fun. I had a fun time watching it. But it's, no, it's not going to be one of my favourite films anytime soon. Um, it's still a bit, the plot's still a bit cut, uh, cardboard, cut out, uh, I mean, just like in the sense that it's a bit, you know, cut, copy and paste, you know, you know where it's going and it is a bit, it's a bit bland, but, um, but it still was fun, sort of almost, uh, just quite easy watching, I felt, after watching this, the same way that I felt after I watched, um, The Da Vinci Code for the first time, which was very recently, um, which is just like, I can see what you're going for and I want, I know that you want to be clever, but for the most part you're just easy watching, but sort of nicely atmospheric, so good on you. Like, I mean, it's okay, I'm not, yeah. So all in all, I would say that this movie is um, just good fun. It's a good fun watch, and uh, you're going to probably enjoy yourself. This, Even if you're not into the CG animals like me, you're probably going to just have a good time with most of the characters, because they are all right. They're, pretty, they're all just fine. They're just goodly fine, and I like it. So... Um, yeah, thanks for that, and we're, uh, thanks for watching, everybody who doesn't want to see the spoiler section. Uh, it's not actually going to be that long of a spoiler section, but um, it's definitely so, there's definitely some stuff I want to dive into. Uh, so yeah, having said that, thanks very much. Uh, I'll speak to you all soon, hopefully. Uh, my next review should be coming out very soon. Um, I should be filming it in a couple of days, and then just putting it together as quickly as possible. My next pop culture alcoholic review, I mean, it's going to be fun. Anyway, yes, thank you very much. Speak soon. Okay, spoiler section, guys. Spoiler section, guys. Um, so what to talk about first? Uh, there were a few things. Like I said, grimly predictable plot. Like, I, uh, in some places, I, everybody knows Colin Farrell is the villain as soon as he turns up with his big, long cloak and the exact same character, uh, hairstyle as um, Grindelwald. Uh, that was just entirely predictable. Um, the... Uh, and plus, Johnny Depp's reveal at the end, I mean, God, I really hope they actually make some good use out of him. He kind of goes out like a massive pussy. He's so easily captured uh, by a, a small group of or Well, I mean, it's quite a large group of Auras, but eventually the main thing that captures him is just Eddie Redmayne using an animal. Um, he goes down so incredibly easily. I mean, Voldemort goes down incredibly easily in the first Harry Potter film, but that doesn't mean that, you know... That's like him in a weakened state. This is supposed to be the guy still in his prime. And plus, if he infiltrated... This guy infiltrated the fucking American ministry, essentially, of magic. Why does he not use his position of power in a more cunning way other than just trying to steal some magical teenager's ability to fly around and cause my... I mean, relatively bad, large amounts of destruction. 
Okay, I mean, I can't see why he couldn't actually just cause all that same amount of destruction. <laughs> Sorry, a strong one. Um, anyway, what else was that? Oh yeah, what I was saying about earlier about spells, why the fuck could any red main not Accio the shit out of all of these animals that he loses? Why, I mean, does it not work on living things? I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty sure there's a scene where he actually Accio's uh, this in the trailer, there's a scene where he Accio's um, the, the fat guy towards him. That's straight, That's another thing. There were definitely lots and lots of lines. Well, not lots of lines, but I just remember there's another line in the trailer where um, the fat chap says, uh, whose name I don't know, and I don't know what else he's been in. Kowalski's the character's name, I think. Or something along those lines. He says, oh, I want to I want to be a wizard. That didn't make it into the movie either. That was kind of strange. So there must be some decent amounts of stuff on the cutting room floor, I, I think. But yeah, no worries about that for the time being. Um, yeah, that was, uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, Accioing and all that business. Uh, another thing that obviously I want to talk about, as I was saying, there was that really nice bittersweet moment uh, at the end, that obviously being when Kowalski gets his memory erased. And then they just completely fuck it up five minutes later when he gets it, when he basically re-meets the woman who he fell in love with. And then maybe they're going to have a relationship together where he, she never tells him that she's magical, but that sounds like bollocks. And like, I mean, why can't we just let go? Why can't we just have that bittersweet ending and know that he's going to be happy, but just like in a different way, just like a tragedy, like a love that couldn't have been and a, a, a life that couldn't have been lived. Because that, you know, instead of just... Oh well, all problems resolve themselves eventually because that's how life works in reality. Problems just go away. Ugh. I mean, I know it's a family film, but God, Doctor Who did it. Doctor Who did it. Why can't you? Doctor Who did it a few times. Ugh. Anywho, so there's that. Um, what else? Uh, I think I want to just talk about the end of this film. What the fuck happened with Eddie Redmayne putting that um, memory erasing stuff it, basically into the rain? It was so poorly explained. Some apparently somehow this bird creature has the ability to disperse uh, a po this poison over a large area so that it rains down on people. Firstly, what about all the muggles who were inside at the time? What about any wizards who are outside? How does the Obliviate control exactly what aspects of your memory you lose? I mean, does did they all lose just like the last three days of their lives or something? Or, I mean, did New York lose the last three days? Or did, or to, is it like specific aspects? In which case, like, how does it know how to target what? I mean, it's just, oh, magic. Um, I mean, they make a pretty definitive point, though, that it doesn't affect people who aren't outside. And yet, people who are inside must be affected. Otherwise, how does the plot make sense? Also, when you think about it, the, like maybe some of it got into the like that water would go into the water supply inevitably. Pro that probably that water would then get disp dispersed over various areas in, the, in America and around the world over periods of time. So just every now and then, different parts of the world would lose three days of its memory, or that any magic that they'd ever witnessed or some bollocks like that. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm just spitballing here. Like that whole ending would be pretty mad. It's pretty mad when you think about it. That Eddie Redmayne essentially poisons the water supply. Um, in order to save all the wizards. It, it really doesn't make sense. Like, whilst the Obliviate spell is being cast, they sort of go around and... Sorry, this whole time I've been fiddling with this. It's the base of my... It's the, it's the thing that locks my camera into its camera stand because my camera's just sat on a laundry basket right now. Because um, I'm in my kitchen. Because my family is all out. Uh, yeah, I live with my parents. I know. But I'm earning money to travel. So, um... But, uh... Where was I going with this? Sorry, I keep losing my point. Um, my train of thought. It's just that this movie's a bit convoluted. Yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense that whilst the Oblivion spell's going on, they fix up the whole city. I've kind of run out of stuff to say, to be honest, because it's because uh, like I can pick apart the movie. But as I said, it was good fun, and I did enjoy it. And despite the fact that some of it didn't really make sense, it wasn't too hard to suspend my disbelief and like go with the fact that they were making the rules up as they went along. I I thought I kind of went into this movie with a bad head on, and I quickly wiped it off wiped it out, like thinking, oh yeah, don't go into this movie, think it's going to be stupid, because, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it is a bit of a silly film, but, um, but at the same, as I said, it has those really silly moments, such as when Eddie Redmayne is trying to lure that, um, lure that weird rhino hippopotamus thing into a, in a mating dance, the thing that looked like it had huge blisters all over its face, um, that was really stupid, but 
it's a kids it's a kids film as well as a, a family film so they you know that's good for the kids they get to see him acting like a fool for a bit um yeah generally fun film i go see uh, you know if you're watching this then you've already seen it maybe you could uh, i mean maybe if you watch if you watch this review and you didn't like the actual film perhaps you might actually get some fun out of, you know just enjoyment about the fact that me as somebody who tends to really nitpick and especially with the Harry Potter franchise I just love nitpicking Harry Potter it's just so easy uh, like uh, and it makes me quite angry actually <laughs> like I can just like blaze for hours on end like about how I mean where the fuck do they wash themselves in the Harry Potter universe because in the fourth Harry Potter film like we never see showers uh, and we never see baths but at the same time apart from once which is the bath in the prefix bathroom and that's the only place that Harry can submerge himself in water so that I mean they, they don't have they can't have showers because they seem to cap technology at like the ninth, late, late uh, 1900s um, so sorry not late 1900s the late 1800s so yeah but do they just not shower I guess the answer is magic but uh, as I said earlier um, yeah as somebody who like me who can nitpick the shit out of things I still really enjoyed this film, and um, I'm kind of looking forward to the f further ones. There was no cliffhanger at the end of this, uh, but um, uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. But you know, they, they maybe I I've heard it's supposed to be a trilogy, so I'm thinking maybe they're gonna. I thought maybe they might see how this goes, and then uh, perhaps make the other two at the same time, like with the Back to the Future and and Pirates of the Caribbean and whatnot. I, I'm not sure. I have to look into that, uh, and I'm sure you will too. But. Um, that aside, I'm looking forward to future movies. I don't like the fact that Grindelwald is basically just uh, Voldemort Mark II. And plus he can't be as bad as Voldemort because he's like the second darkest wizard of all time. Which, uh, wow, we, we get like the sidekick as the villain in this one. But then again, maybe like scaling things down a bit will be nice to, you know, if the problems aren't trying to be quite so epic then the movie doesn't have to take itself so seriously and doesn't have to become the most ridiculous film like... Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2. Um, yeah. Alright, well, thanks very much. Somebody criticised my uh, uh, one of my videos lately for saying that I say um too much. To be fair, I said um a lot in this one. Doesn't really matter, though. I mean, we all say um. I, and plus, I... Never mind. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching. It's been fun talking to you once again, and I look forward to talking to you again in future. My name is Felix Jones and Lego Cheetah. Thank you for tuning in. And, yeah catching us soon. Bye.